Hello from Haifa. The boys in green back home tonight after a tough loss on the road to Halon. Tonight, playing in front of their owner here in Haifa. Good evening, everyone. Aaron Heller along with Simi Rieger welcoming you back to Romema and introducing the Maccabi Haifa merchandise, which we've been telling you about for so many weeks. Here it is, the there black shirt, the green shirt. You can have it all on triangleinternet.tv. Um, our game tonight, a big matchup against Panea Sharon, a tough Top team, Simi. A lot of history between these two teams. They played in the playoffs a year ago. And they're this kind of Jekyll and Hyde type of team. They can beat the best teams. They can lose to the worst. What does Haifa got to do tonight? Well, the first thing they have to do is defensive rebound. Uh, uh, Benea Sharon has a, a very tough, high-jumping inside players uh, that, that rebound very well in block shots. The second thing they have to do is they have to make the three-point shot because that will open it up. Because if they're going to go to the basket, a lot of a shot blocking going on down below. And the third po thing is the point guards, how to real make paper, uh, people better uh, around them. And that's very important to draw Hajaj and Benda do a good job. This team, Aaron, you know, has picked up this week a gentleman by the name of P.J. Tucker out of Texas. A very, very good player. Played uh, a couple of years ago, Hulone. Uh, he's uh, what we would call a fringe player in the NBA. Very good player, changes their whole team. Of course, Benash Run also has perhaps the best big man in the game. Sean James leads the leagues in blocks and in rebounds. And to counter that, Maccabi Haifa, the guy we're going to see tonight, is Mamadou NJ. Last week, he had his debut for Haifa, their seven-foot center, played 12 minutes and showed some sparks of, uh, of brilliance there. Yeah, I spoke to Davon about him last week, and he really likes the guy. The guy knows the game. He plays well. He backs you up on the defensive end. He'll block some shots. He just doesn't have a lot of minutes in him now. He's an elderly uh, young man, but he's very smart and very good, and I think he'll be a big positive uh, plus for, for the Haifa team. You mentioned Davon Jefferson. Of course, he has been the main guy for Haifa all season long, but coming off two uncharacteristically poor performances, what's going on with him, and how is he going to bounce back? Well, you know, Davon, it's a matter of uh, confidence. You know, he's not used to having downs like this because he's such a good player, a high-level player. But it happens to everybody, and I mean everybody, including uh, Michael Jordan and, and, and whoever you want to call LeBron James and then 4-for-24 uh, uh, guys that do that. But, you know, he has to understand that he helps the team in other ways by the fact that he gets the ball opens it up for because they usually double team it opens it up for other players he's an excellent player he just can't get frustrated and has to help on the defense and get out on the break just play his game and you see Davon Jefferson there warming up just moments ago look at those numbers there his season average for the first time this season out of the top five and that's thanks to those numbers you see right there in the last two games he's keeping his rebounds up there but really his scoring dipping significantly in the last two games this evening, we're going to have a featured matchup, which we are going to want you guys to keep your eyes on. Featured for Haifa, Jason Rich, and opposite him, a guy named Cookie Belcher, a veteran of this league. He's been around here for a long time. Simi, break us down the combination between well, those well, guys. Well, Cookie Belcher played for University of Nebraska uh, years ago. He's a very, very good player. The problem with Cookie is he has a lot of times he's been hurt. As a matter of fact, he missed a season and a half. He's a very smart, intelligent guy, a team leader, not by vocally. And uh, Jason Rich, we see uh, going to the basket. He's a Florida State University player, played for Leonard Hamilton. It's his first year here. Last year, he was in uh, uh, Cantu in Italy in the second division, a very big plus. Numbers comparable, of course, between the two of them. Jason Rich, a lot younger, a lot more athletic. Should be an interesting matchup to watch this evening. We'll be back with that and a lot, lot more after this. And with Jeff Rosen in the stands tonight from Maccabi Haifa watching his team here in Romema, Simi and I will be right back with the game after this. Maccabi Haifa owner Jeff Rosen, welcome to Israel. You're here for a visit and an uh, exciting game we have tonight against Bnei Sharon. Oh, excited about the game. You know, Hasharon's coming off a few losses. They're pretty dangerous and hungry. Uh, we're coming off a tough one-point loss last week. So our guys got to, you know, keep home advantage and beat a tough opponent tonight. Anything to add on the business side? Anything you've achieved during your visit here this last time? Yeah, we had a very exciting visit. Um, the mayor uh, has uh, gotten the funding to renovate this arena, this very famous arena here in Israel. We've uh, generated 35 million shekels for, uh, for our renovation program. It'll take a little less than two years, and we're going to go from 3,000 to 5,000 seats and redo the place, so I'm pretty excited about it. All right, well, good luck and hope you enjoy the game here in the arena tonight. Thank you very much.
That was Maccabi Haifa owner Jeff Rosen visiting here for the game, and we are about to get underway, and you see the comparison between these two teams, Simi. Uh, Haifa not used to being a team that outscores the other one. What else jumps out for you from well, those the, stats? The first thing you see, a four-point differential on between Haifa offense and defense and a less than a point differential uh, for uh, Benea Sharon. Rebounding uh, four-point differential. The major thing is turnover, 17 for Haifa, which is almost three, three and a half more. Three points, the percentages are basically the same. Foul totals, uh, Haifa's better. But the major, major thing is it has to be, there has to be some easy points in this game. Whoever gets the easy points uh, is going to win the game because I'll tell you the truth, Aaron, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Benea Sharon has a lot of shot blockers under the basket, and they got tough guards. All right, and let's take a look at the other games that we've had because this is the uh, game that wraps up this round. Afula, big victory over Ramat Gan, over 20 points there. Rishon Litsion beating Hapol Holon. Hapol Holon, by the way, scoring four points in that first quarter, a season low for anyone. Ashkelon beating Naharia. Jerusalem losing to Netanya again. That's the big upset of this round. And Maccabi Tel Aviv, as expected, over Gilboa Galil. Well, well, what really surprised me was the, um, the uh, difference, a 20-point difference of Fula beating Ramad Gan. The, the uh, 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 Netanya win over, over Jerusalem, I don't know, 69-60. Jerusalem was winning at home. They lose 74-72. Go figure it out. Now you take a look there at the standings. You see with the loss, Jerusalem locked up there with Netanya. And Haifa, if they win tonight, will be joining them in that number two spot. Ashkelon, a 500 team. And you take a look at the bottom part of the standings there. A bunch of good teams over there. Rishon Letzion, Bnei Asheron, as you see, 6-9. and nine, But they are a lot better than that record reflects. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, there's going to be a fight who's going to be in the last one of the uh, bottom four, and that's a major, major problem. Whoever it will be will be a major disappointment. We're about uh, to that, get... Uh, that, excuse me. And that's why this game, Aaron, is so important to, to Benea Sharon. they got to start winning again. They brought in P.J. Tucker, a great player from uh, fr uh, 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 a very high-priced player, too. Well, P.J. Tucker, as the new uh, guy on the team, he'll be coming off the bench. Your starters will be Cookie Bletcher, Ben Rice, and Aris Katz, the Israelis. Uh, Sam Clancy, a power forward, and then the big guy in the middle, Sean James, Maccabi Haifa, starting tonight with Mizrahi instead of Jason Rich, who just got back yesterday from the funeral of his grandmother. Uh, our condolences to him. He'll be coming off the bench. Your referees this evening, Yari Reinish, Omer Esteron, and Ziv Radomski. And we're about to get underway here in Haifa. Round number 16, Romema Arena, Haifa. Height-wise, this is a very small team that... that uh uh, Haifa's putting out against uh, Benea Sharon. Clancy's a great rebounder, a graduate of USC, uh, a really tough rebounder. Sean James is the, was the leading shot blocker in college also when he played for Duquesne. And, you know, I mean, with those two, it makes it really tough to score under the bucket. And Sean James is currently the league leader in Israel in rebounds and in block shots. Really the... Uh I mean, I think it's fair to say the best center in this game right now in Israel right now. Yeah, probably. Not just that. We were noticing he was singing the national Israeli I know, that blew national me away. anthem. <laughs> it blew me away, too. But, you know, I mean, he's here. He understands the language. So he seems like a great kid. Yeah, and so uh, probably among his many attributes, one of the only foreigners who can sing the national anthem. And he's going to go to work early on against Davon Jefferson. Height advantage there for James. Shoveled it to Katz. Cannot get the roll. Fight for the rebound, but out comes Roby all alone. Slam. And that's what I was talking about, getting that rebound. They were fighting for every rebound. They want to stretch the court. Haifa, they're going to push up a little bit because the height advantage goes to uh, uh, Benia Sharon. Eris Katz leading the attack for Benia Sharon. Not a natural point guard, but he's going to do most of the ball handling duties there. Cookie Blesher going down low. Sean James has a height advantage. Cannot connect, but you mentioned Clancy. And you mentioned Jefferson. Big rejection over there. Ben David leading the attack here. Taking over the starting job for Jorha Judge, the point guard position. Kujikaro down low against Clancy. Two big, strong guys, and Kujikaro gets the better of that one. That's a great play by Kujikaro, because Clancy's a tough guy. I really like him. Ben Rice to the hole gets a bucket. And you can't give that up on your transition defense. They didn't work hard to get that bucket. You just scored. You have to have a court balance. That's wrong. Ben Rice only averages three points a game. Doesn't get that much uh, playing time. 
But it works there. In and out from Moshe Mizrahi, the rebound. Sean James. And he's a big key for the uh, Haifa team because he can stretch the uh, defense. Sean James way outside the arc there. He's not going to do much damage from out there. That's where he likes it. Down on the blocks. Working on Jefferson. No good. Rebound for Clancy again. Yeah, but, and an easy put but back. But the whole thing is, once he gets it down low, they're doubling up on, on him. And the other guy is uh, the other big man, Clancy's getting free. What's happening is the rotation isn't right that they're closing off Clancy. The guards aren't rotating quick enough. We are here in Haifa, Israel's third largest city. Another thing we should tell you about the Israeli league is we see Jefferson oh, with an wow. amazing move to the hoop wow. right there. Yes. Flips it over and finishes with his left hand, but here comes Sharon. Clancy getting way underneath and, and it, rolls it away. And again, the same thing. They just scored, and they get scored on. Where the hell are the guards? Pretty fast pace to start this thing off. Two and a half minutes into it, six apiece. Richard Roby has got the advantage on Ben Rice. Jefferson. Only six points, averaging in the last two games after almost 18 in the previous 13. He's looking to rebound tonight. And there's a foul against James, what we call a phantom foul. You have to be a detective to see that. Or one of this evening's referees. <laughs> Which is the same thing. Would like to mention to you folks watching us in America, the uh, Russian rule that applies in Israel, each team has to have at least two Israelis on the court at one time. And Haifa actually has three tonight as Moshe Mizrahi gets fouled from the three-point line there. And that's significant because it's number two semi on Sean, oh, James. Sean James. And it's a three-shot three foul, uh, three foul. Three-foul-shot-shot. Shot, three-shot-shot. Shot, 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 three shot, 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 shot. Oh, it's she sells <laughs> seashells by the seashore. P.J. Tucker in yeah. the game making his first appearance as Sean James takes a quick seat. That was a huge foul there. Moshe goes for three to the line and Sean James out of the game. You take a look at him in your screen right there. Moshe Mizrahi, an 80% free throw shooter. Yeah, yeah. And Moshe's a shooter. You know, he's a catch and shoot. He can put it on the floor once. He doesn't go to the basket much, but he stretches the defense. He's like 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, so you've got a big kid shooting uh, jump shots from outside. And just like we said, uh, opened our mouth too quickly. Exactly. Uh -huh. There you go. And we have a green screen over there. Usually you have blue screens, but since we're in Haifa, we're going to give you that green screen whenever there's a dead uh, moment. It's Rocky, two out of three from the line, and Haifa up by two. Um, Jason Rich, because he was not practicing with the team this week, will not start, but he will appear off the bench. So Haifa actually with three Israelis out there, Ben David, Mizrahi, and Kujikaro. And they call it on Kujikaro. Avi Ashkenazi can't believe it, thought he took the stand, but Clancy sent him flying. Esteron makes the call, referee. I like Esteron as a ref. But he made a bad call. That was an offensive foul. Or a walk. Foul number one on Haifa. Benea Sharon has two, but significantly, both two belonging to Sean James. Their all-star center. Barely got it in in time. Bletcher for three. Nice Rattles shot. it home. Nice shot by Cookie Bletcher with, with Moshe in his face. Cookie out of Nebraska has been in Israel for like three or four years. Loves it here. Cookie Bletcher was three times a Big 12 all-defensive team player when he was in Nebraska. He graduated there in 2001, and his hometown is Mexico, Missouri. Roby gets stretched. Look at that. Four on. Oh, Tucker all alone. And the layup, it looked like he almost it was pulled up lame a little bit. He wanted to throw it down, but the legs weren't there. Well, he or had... The, or the sneakers or whatever. You're not going to get much of an easier welcoming bucket to the Israeli League after two years away. Last time we saw here in action was a very memorable game, Simi, yeah. when Halon defeated Maccabi Tel Aviv two years ago, taking the championship. Oh, rejected there That's by Clancy. Clancy. There's still four on this. Uh, nice play. Calls they call a, a travel. All right. But it was a good play by Clancy. And that is turnover and number two on Haifa. As you take a look at the replay there, just rejected down low. Roby goes for the stuff. They call the walk on Kujikaro and Haifa. Tops in the league in turnovers. That's been their Achilles heel throughout the Avi Ashkenazi era. Great defense, great rebounding. 
Not very good at holding on to the ball. Cots with the move. Tucker open for three. Brick. Well, what a brick. But you didn't pick up the rebound. And Tucker he doesn't get it off it in time. No, it didn't touch the rim. They're going to call a shot clock violation, so. Uh, Which is wrong. Which is wrong. It I'd hit like, the backboard. It, it hit the backboard, but it also hit the rim. So a couple of. Uh, Let's see it right here. It yeah, hit the it rim. It did hit the rim. It you hit got the it right. rim. And that is a mistake. Yeah, well, you know, it's not going to be the first, not going to be the last. And it's not going to do much help for Banana Sharon because they call it like they see it. And Haifa gets the ball down by three. 5.25 to go in the first. Benda thought about it. Roby down to Kujikaro. And the foul on Cookie. Cookie on a switch gets uh, Kujikaro down low. Nice play. Throw the ball inside. For any of you wondering at home, Cookie is not his given name. It's Segato. But the nickname stuck, and he's been known here for the last five seasons. And really, on as Cookie. Really a gentleman, really a nice person, good player. He's been hurt for a, a couple of years, so he's not really at his best. Kujikaro going down on Clancy. Nice move underneath, rejected oh by P.J. Tucker on the help. Benda with the move, left-handed flip, no good. Jefferson flying, but it goes off his leg. And that's Radumski under the basket making the call. Beneha Sharon is tops in the league in block shots, and you're seeing an example of that early on. Usually it's Sean James there, but tonight Clancy and Tucker get together for those rejections down low. They go after you. Clancy played at USC, Southern Cal for... Uh, 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 Bibby, Henry Bibby. His dad was an athlete, but a football player. And His that dad was a basketball home. player, too. I know him well. He played for University of Pittsburgh. And that is the hometown of uh, Sam Clancy, and, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And, that, and then he went to play for the Seattle Seahawks. He also got drafted by the NBA. And that's Davon knocking and he it needed down. that role. Yep, and that's nice to see. I mean, two shots, two buckets. And Davon, that's been getting off to rough starts the last two weeks and just could not find his rhythm. A quick start is crucial for him as Kujikaro gets a steal, and it will remain high for ball. And that's a tough play. I mean, you know, Ido did a real good job, and here comes uh, Itzhaki coming in for uh, uh, Ben Rice. And draw uh, Hajaj in for Haifa in place of Ben David. Yep. Ben Rice's father, dad, was a player in Jerusalem, grew up in the Hulon area, went to the States, played for New York Tech. Ronnie Ganglin and, and Sammy Stern. He was born in 1990. Can you believe that, Sammy? Who? Young Guns. Ben Rice. Oh, okay. Not oh. even 20 years old. Yeah. 13 10, Benea Sharon. PJ Tucker with the move. The flip. Nice move by PJ Tucker. Kuzikaro is looking, uh, <laughs> looking to find himself. He just does not have the speed to, to keep with P.J. Tucker. Hajaj in there. Kujikar with the move. Way off. Jefferson tries to retreat it, but cannot, and it will be Banasher on ball, up by five. And here is Jason Rich, who's making his first appearance of the evening. And a little confusion, but he is going to come in for Davon Jefferson. So they're going real small. Wow. Kujikaro and essentially four guards. Yep. Interesting look here from Avi Ashkenazi and his coaching staff. P.J. Tucker, his first appearance, but he's not bashful. And this Clancy. Is I, this is what I was talking oh, about. Oh, power. Do you remember I was talking about defensive rebounding? Getting murdered. Clancy's got six. P.J. Tucker hasn't been in there many minutes, but he's already taken five shots. Not afraid to make his presence felt early on. Kujikaro throws up a prayer. Roby with the rebound. Can't get it. Gets it again. Now he gets it and the foul. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. The mantra of Richard Roby. 
We take a look at the replay here. Nice, the keeping after it. Jefferson in for Moshe Mizrahi. 17-12 for Bnei Asheron. Bnei Asheron also not a very high scoring team. In fact, defensively, they're up there with Haifa and Tel Aviv as two of the top three defensive teams in the league. And here comes Yitzchak, you bring the ball up. Clemson went after him when Barnes was there, with Larry Shiat was the coach, and Barnes. And there is Itzhaki, a and rainbow it. shot, and he just drained it. He's up and down. He can make it if he gets hot. He's just what we call a streak shooter. Sort of like the rest of this team. We mentioned Jekyll and Hyde element to them. They took Maccabi Tel Aviv to the final minutes of the cup championship, almost pulling off a stunning upset. And then they've lost to Naharia, they lost to Ramat Gan, they lost to amazing teams that they shouldn't have. You never know what you're gonna get with this well, team from Dan Sharon. It's the type of thing that they play to the level of the team they're playing against. They're not good enough to play, bring, when they play a weak team, to bring the other team up to their level or just crush somebody for some reason. I don't know why, because I only see them once or twice a year. But most teams in the Israeli league are like that. Well, Banana Sharon's an interesting team because unlike any other, they don't represent one city, Simi. They represent two. Yeah, they represent Ra Ra Nana Ra and Herzliya, yeah. um, suburbs pretty much north of Tel Aviv, for those of you who aren't familiar. And they have a rotating arrangement, which one year they host their games in Ra Nana, one year in Herzliya, and it seems to be working. So... Herzliya, or rather Panea Sharon, up by seven, two minutes to go in the first. They've had their way in this quarter. Running out of room, there is Itzhaki, and Kujikaro hits the deck. And that's Itzhaki getting out of control. He should, he had a curl on it. He should have either taken the shot, passed it, and moved on. But instead, he tried to make a play that wasn't there. And there's Don Shamir, the young coach of the uh, of Panea Sharon. And we are about to see a substitution now in which Mamadou NJ, the seven-foot center from Senegal. That's another tongue twister. <laughs> He's about to come in the game, well, yeah. along with Moshe Mizrahi. Yeah. In place of Richard Roby and Ido Kujikaro. Kujikaro has the only foul for Haifa. Benesharon has got five, so that means that uh, Haifa will be going the line here on in. And the two minutes left in this quarter. Aja to Jefferson, nice catch. Whoa. Nice play, what a play. He mishandled it, was uh, athletic enough to keep in the air, grab a hold of it and put it in, and wow. Oh. And a rejection there, and Jefferson contesting that shot, not giving Clancy anything easy. And Moshe Mizrahi got burnt by, uh, by uh, Cookie Bletcher, and then the rebounding, you know. And here comes Ron Steele, played for University of Alabama, played for Gottfried. Another one of those up and down players, Simi. He's had some splendid games for this team and some games where he didn't exist. If he gets going, it's over. And he, he as a junior in college, he would have been a lottery pick, and then he's decided to stay in school. It was his sophomore year, I don't know. And... Uh, he got hurt and that killed him. Same thing with Clancy at the uh, Clancy's junior year. He would have been a lottery pick. He decided to stay in school, or the first round pick, and then he had a terrible second year, and he just didn't get. He got drafted, but uh, second round. Well, a lot of people watching our broadcast, Simi, in America, realizing that really the European level now, just that one notch below the NBA. These are guys who have that potential, but they're just not quite there yet. Well, I don't know how many notches. But, uh, I didn't say how many. I said it was a notch below. It could, right. could have been a couple. Right. Um, but definitely a high caliber of play over here, uh, much more than he used to be. Yeah, yeah. you got some really talented players. you got Jason Rich from Florida State. you got uh, Jefferson from uh, USC. Clancy you know, also went to USC. Clancy, USC. Uh, what's his name from Duquesne? Hajaj got hung out of the air, bailed out there by Rich. Tough shot by Jason Rich. Doesn't go. NJ giving a good fight. 
But Clancy gets the rebound. Clancy, seven points, five rebounds, has been the man this first quarter. And we got a minute left to go in it. Clancy going to work. Jefferson got a piece of it. Elad Hasid yelling push. Oh. Oh, that was a bad pass. NJ yeah. is not as quick as he used to. Yeah, but, you know, Moshe Mizrahi should know that. I mean, he's not. what's he going to do with the ball down there? It's another turnover. And we're in the last half minute of the quarter. Six on the shot clock. Tucker drills it. He feels at home, Simi. Yeah, but nobody came out to push on him. I mean, he, he rubbed him off. There was no switch. Hype is going to hold for a last shot down by eight here. And the first. Four seconds. Three, two, one. Rich. Oh, Nice yes. finish at the buzzer. Yes. So Jason Rich with the bucket ends it. And your score after one. B'nai Sharon 23. Maccabi Haifa 17. We'll be back right after this. Do you know where I play ball? It may surprise me. I'll play in Israel. Israeli basketball. Maccabi Haifa. The amazing move. The wild action, the exciting spirit. Streaming live games available on TriangleInternet.tv. Follow your favorite team and get the latest gear. Jerseys, signed basketballs, headwear, accessories, gifts. Available now at TriangleInternet.tv. Haifa Hoops for Kids, a joint initiative of Maccabi Haifa Basketball and United Jewish Communities of Metro West, offers a North American community the chance to send underprivileged and special needs children a night of fun at a Maccabi Haifa game. Haifa Hoops for Kids is a great way to give back to the Israeli community. Help bring a smile to the face of a child who would otherwise not be able to afford a professional basketball game. Make a difference in a child's life. Become a donor. Reach out and help a child in Israel. So after one, it's 23-17 for Bnei HaSharon. Uh, looking mighty impressive tonight. And a guy looking very impressive is Sam Clancy. You see the matchup versus Davon Jefferson, and so far, Clancy the winner of that showdown. Yeah, but you know, there's a big difference. Clancy is like a four, four and a half. He's a power forward going on to his center. He's a very good inside player, very physical, very strong, less athletic, but rebounds really well, as we see he has five rebounds. Uh, four Davon, of them on the offensive board. Yeah, Davon Jefferson is more of a three and a half, or, yeah. you know, a, he plays a four here because he's so athletic and they don't have anybody else in that position. After, though, uh, two weak performances in which he averaged six, he has six in the first quarter. That's got to be a good sign for Ave Ashkenazi that his main gun looks to be back at his usual form. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's got, he looks pretty comfortable. And there is Haifa owner Jeff Rosen uh, fiddling with his phone and enjoying the game. Uh, here in Haifa, came in from uh, Miami uh, last week and enjoying his team tonight in Romema. It took yeah. a while for the fans to show up, Simi, but uh, we are about half full now or maybe even a little bit more. Yeah, well, probably more. Uh, you know, I mean, Jeff is a, is a really, really uh, gentleman. Uh, you know, he knows what he wants. He's uh, going out to get it. He, he's come here to see the team. He's going to stay for the next game also next week and then he's going to go home for a couple weeks and then come back for the rest of the season as we head into the stretch drive of this season we have seven games and only after this one only six actually left as we see the sean james back in the game after he had to leave after two quick fouls so we're heading into the stretch drive here semi after this six more games and then playoffs yeah and what we had here is we had somebody going to the bucket really strong and uh uh, missing a shot and the uh, grabbing of the rim, and they called offensive goaltending, even though the ball wasn't on the rim. Which I really don't understand, but then again. Rich going baseline. Retreats. He's out on Eris Cots there, doubling up on him. Gets the ball to Davon, spins, throws it up, and almost his prayer was answered. I see they're doubling on Rich. They don't want him to get off, because really, what's his name? Is a, t a player. Jason is a player that can't get off. And we have Tucker giving a speech to uh, the referee. And I'm sure it won't be his last. Jason Rich scored 25 in the last matchup between these two teams in the first round, in which Haifa won 77-67 on the road. He was the leading player that game. You see Jefferson at the line, a 70% free throw shooter. Just about at the clip that his team is shooting. 
That's it. Oh, wow. It was pushing it. And Sean James with the rebound. Yeah, you don't see Davon do that too often. You see the free throw numbers. Nothing uh, exciting for either team early on. And these are not two exceptionally good free throw shooting teams. The Banana Sharon, even worse than Haifa, they shoot below 70% from the line. Cots open for three. Wide open. Pulls the trigger. Cannot connect. But look at that rebound. P.J. Tucker out to Ron Steele. He does connect. And we saw that uh, Joe Hajaj came down and doubled on Tucker when he got the ball against Davon. They threw it out, missed the jumper, got the rebound. Wide open jumper for Steele, nothing but net. And it's a nine point lead as you see the numbers there of offensive rebounds. Seven to three in that category for Bnei Sharon, and that's something that Haifa usually has the advantage. You know, Jason threw the ball on the ground to, for um, uh, NJ, you have to throw all the ball up high so he can catch it. Mamadou NJ, a uh, seven footer, a very big guy in fact. Uh, Haifa's never had a guy of his size out there. It comes at a price, though. He's not as nimble with his hands. He needs to get the ball delivered where he's comfortable. Eight and a half to go in the half. Sean James, he's going to take it for three, and he's going to get it. And that's a three, and all of a sudden we got a... A 12-point game, and Avish Ganazi wants a timeout. Uh, but uh, yeah, Sharon, four for six from beyond the arc, Simi. Yeah, you know, but they're getting wide-open looks. You know, it's a lot easier. I know, Aaron, you're a shooter, so you should know. <laughs> From your mouth to God's ears. Tough shot for Jason Rich in the corner, and Money he gets it. And knocks down a three. P.J. Tucker. He's got the matchup he wants. Down low. Isaac Rosenfeld. He made his entrance into the game a... Uh, a foreigner who is Israeli as well, Simi, right? What's yeah. his, his story? Uh, his, uh, I don't Foul know. number he two was, on Jefferson, was, by the way. He was adopted by uh, a, Jew a Jewish family, and he, you know, he became Jewish, converted to Judaism. Hence the name Isaac Rosenfeld. Yeah. Haifa takes a timeout. Down by nine. We'll be right back. So Avi Ashkenazi takes a timeout to get his team back on track. They are down by nine. And uh, Bnei Sharon so far showing it from all different angles. Sean James hitting three-point shots. You know things are going well for them. You know, when you're not playing well and you're doing things different, you got to make the other team think. And that's what you have to do. You have to play a zone. You have to change things up so the other team... Yeah, uh, uh, Bnei Sharon is comfortable now. They have their, they're in their uh, uh, a comfort zone, and there's nothing you can do about it. You saw there on your screen a moment ago, the big difference so far, the offensive rebounds. And Bnei Sharon, another one there by Sean James. They are just dominating in and that a, department. And a foul on Itzhaki, and that is no good. He shot it from almost half court and got fouled. Jason Rich picked up a three, three shot foul. So he's gonna go the line for three shots, or Itzhaki. And again, the offensive rebounds, eight so far for Bnei Asheron, leading to uh, at least seven second chance points. It's, it's hockey, his dad played in the States too. And I think he went to NYU, if I, if I remember correctly, in the 60s. Or it's hockey was voted the most improved player of the Israeli league two seasons ago. Averages 6.6 .6 points a game. 
hasn't really lived up to his potential. He had one good year, like you said, Aaron, two years ago for Maccabi Ramadan, but he hasn't really played that well the last two years. Well, he's a 72% free throw shooter, and he only makes one out of three there, but it's enough to get his team a double-figure lead. 30-20 for B'nai Sharon. Roby out there now with Tello Rosa, who makes his first appearance. The contact, the continuation. Richard Roby, all-time leading scorer, University of Colorado, showing third, you what he's got there. Third foul on Sean James. And that's a big, big, big one. Really? Really? And he's going to sit down. And, and, and Avi uh, Ashkenazi, the coach, is doing something completely different. He's playing with all, basically, all guards except for Ido Kujikaro. His three Americans out there are all small forwards and second guards. Pelarosa, Rich, and Roby. So he did make a change, but... And Haifa gets it back. Hajaj oh, connects. Yes. And those are the little things that can change a game. Perhaps a momentum shifter as the lead shrinks to six. Making something out of nothing. P.J. Tucker working on Pelo Rosa. Turn around, tough shot, cannot connect. But he pops it out and another B'nai Sharon ball. It's cocky. Rosenfeld. Every ball bouncing B'nai Sharon's way. Back to P.J. Tucker. He wants it. Pulls up for the J. And, oh. and another is, rebound. What is going on? Why aren't people Wide open, out? or it's hockey. Just give them the basket. And how many gifts are they going to get? And they still didn't connect. Hajaj fouled by Ron Steele. Ten, Sammy, count them. Ten offensive rebounds for you know, Benesha Ron. But, but really what surprised me, Aaron, is that they didn't turn it this time into points. Yeah. I mean, you had three in a row, and, and now you got Cookie Bletcher going in for Tucker. So basically he's matching up, and now there's a timeout on the, on the court. We'll be right back. And you see some of the highlights we've had so far, and they've been all B'nai HaSharon. Down by six is Haifa with 6.26 to go in the half. The good news, though, for Haifa is three fouls on Sean James. He's out of the game right yeah, now. Yeah, and Sean James is a game changer. He dominates. You go inside, he's ready to throw your stuff right back at you. And if Clancy is the off guy, that makes him impossible. You know, when they start playing Tucker, Clancy, and, and Sean James together with two Israelis, it's going to be problems. And you see, even with that, points in the paint there. Look at the rebounds, look at the second chance points, and look at the concerned look on the face of Haifa owner Jeff Rosen. Roby working hard to get position on Itzhaki. Nice defense somehow. Got the ball loose. Nice defense. It's called butcher defense. Hey, the if, refs, they if they don't call it. The refs didn't make the call. That's <laughs> all. You're right. If they didn't call it, you're right. I agree with you. Haifa amping up their defensive intensity here. It's hockey for three. Way off the mark. That's an air ball. And here's Haifa coming right back with Jesse Pelo Rosa. Jason Rich pulls up for the nice. open J. No. Oh. In and out. That Ron Steele the rebound. Oh, that was money. 18 rebounds for Bnei Sharon compared to 10. Make that only 11 for Haifa. In the corner, Pelo Rosa for three. In and out. Rich went for the rebound, and he's fouled. Fouled by Yitzhaki on the rebound. 
They're getting the open shots. They're just not, not knocking them down, Aaron. And I blame you for that. Me? Yeah. <laughs> the pace of the game picking up here, though, in the second half. They're not making a lot of shots, but they are running up and down the floor pretty quickly. Haifa shooting 48% from the field, so that's not the problem. They're just not getting as many shots as Manish Sharon because of the rebounding issues. Hello Rosa just hanging in the air there. Kujikaro hustles for the rebound, gets it. Three people on top of him. And he missed the one incher. And he's still fighting, but Ben Rice comes out with it. I'm not even gonna talk about it. Ido Kujikaro, <laughs> one for five so far tonight. One of the leading Israeli scorers of the league. Clancy now working on him down low. Walked. Walked. And there they do call a walk. Sam, who's a friend of mine, walked. Sam I am. Sam I am. No, that's that's Sam. Uh, what's his name? Dr. Seuss. No, that's Sam that played <laughs> for uh, Houston, won the championships. Uh, Mizrahi in for Rich. So Haifa again with the three Israelis out there now, Benda, Kujikaro, and Mizrahi. They've got their starting lineup there, except for Kelo Rosa instead of Jefferson. And you see the uh, looking to do anything they can to get some points. They haven't scored in 317. Why are people taking layups from 15 feet out? Shoot a jump shot. And that's, uh, wow, Benea Sharon hasn't scored for 435, so nobody has scored here for a long, long time. Somebody's hurt. Sam's hurt. Sam's hurt, I think. Uh, he seems to be shaking it off there. Looked like he might have buckled his ankle. Oh, you see it right there. Yep, he buckled his ankle. We've seen, yeah. I've seen that happen a hundred times. Just Herb's thinking about it. Oh, yeah. It's Rahi. Roby. Three seconds on, uh, no. Now they're going to call on Sam Clancy away from the ball. Pushing on Kujikaro, and with that, they're in the penalty again. Two shots. So Kujikaro's going to go the line. I got Tucker and... And uh, Cats, Cats coming, in the coming game. back in for Steele and uh, Rosenblatt. Now, P.J. Tucker. Rosenfeld, I'm sorry. P.J. Tucker, we talked about him in Halon, but long before that, an interesting pedigree. Coming from Raleigh, North Carolina, he went to Texas University, Sydney, where he played together with LaMarcus Aldridge and Daniel Booby Gibson, two guys who are having pretty impressive NBA careers, especially Aldridge. He's an all-star, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, he played for Barnes down in Texas. They got a good program down there. Ken McDonald was the assistant coach, and now is at Western Kentucky. They got they they went really deep into the into the uh, into the uh, uh, playoffs, NCAA playoffs. And PJ Tucker was drafted in the NBA by the Toronto Raptors in the second round, 35th pick. Played a couple of years. Along with Anthony Parker, uh, formerly Maccabi Tel Aviv player, who they confused him with here in the introductions before yeah. the game. Clancy down low, running out of room. And they're going to call the push off on Kujikaro. Number two on him. I don't understand how you can complain about this foul. Here he goes. He just pushes him out of bounds. In hockey, they call that a body check. Mamadou Nj in the game in place of Kujikaro. Kuji's got two, Jefferson's got two. But the real foul trouble is on Panay Sharon with uh, Sean James with three, Clancy's got two. And, and you know, for all the bad play that Haifa's played, they're down four. Yeah with four minutes to go in the half. Bletcher, little stutter step, nice look there to Clancy. Rattles and, it out, and rebound, NJ, Haifa. And, and that's the uh, big thing that NJ gives him, a big stopper in the middle, somebody that's gonna block a shot. Guys had to change the look. Oh, wow. Well, this is a combination we haven't seen ever before for Haifa. Fast break there, Tucker finishes it easy for Banana Sharon. Oh, all right. NJ out there with Roby and uh, and Pelo Rosa, and it's rare to see Haifa playing without either Jefferson or Rich out there. Usually Ashkenazi likes to have one of them there to be his go-to guy. Benda. 
Roby with the move. And if and there that, is a go-to guy now, it's Roby. And that's two shots. You know, he's smart. He's taking him to the hole. He's putting it, he's putting himself on the line. This is the sixth, seventh foul of the quarter. There's 315 left of the quarter. He's doing the right things. Richard Roby has come on strong in recent weeks, is averaging now up eight points a game. Um, yeah, Coach Bitzelik at Colorado would be proud of him. And you see now he has eight to match his season average, and he is the leading scorer tonight for Haifa. Very talented player. I met his his girlfriend and his daughter Cassidy last week in uh, Hulon. They're thinking about getting married. And expecting another one soon. Expecting well. a big one. Yep. And look at the steal there. Two on one. The pass to NJ and it finishes it. And that's good defense. And that's changing things around. Tucker answers right back. And P.J. Tucker has 10 points in his debut. Didn't waste any time getting into the swing of things here. N.J. down low, little hook shot. Hits a front iron. No good. Katz. Ball gets away. That's a bad pass by Katz. Now, I know him since he's been a kid in Jerusalem. He went to five-star with me. He shouldn't be throwing a bounce pass like that. He probably met Clancy then. <laughs> High for ball. Ben David, the starting point guard for Haifa, for a long time led the league in three-point shooting percentage. Has cooled off a little bit in the last few weeks, but he's still shooting 52% from beyond the arc, and you're not going to have many coaches complain about that figure. Roby off the screen, nice drills play. it. Nice play. Nice play. Good timing. Nice pick by NJ. De La Rosa gave him the pass exactly in, in the area where he needs it to make that J. And Roby you know what? Double. And you know what he didn't think about? It. He just shot it. Roby in double figures with 10. Paces Haifa's attack. Only down by three. And another that's, bad pass by Cass. And that's good defense. That's good defense. They're making them backdoor. They're putting pressure on the ball. We like to see that. And that you see Coach Shamir telling him, what is going on here? We can get backdoor layups. And maybe he was also looking at a stat line there. Zero points and three turnovers. <laughs> a minute 45 to go in the half. A low scoring affair in the second here. It's been all Richard Roby oh, for Heist by this quarter. Going to the hole. Tell me about it. And the lead down to one as Richard Roby leads Haifa to charge back into this game. Tucker, rejected by NJ. That's what we didn't have before. We didn't have a shot blocker except for Jefferson, and he's really not big enough. NJ showing some sparks tonight. Mizrahi. Haifa looking for their first lead of the night. Will Mizrahi Money. give it? Oh. Almost. And we heard the smack all the way over here. That's a no. foul, Benda. Out of bounds. Well, it was out of bounds when he hit him. <laughs> so it doesn't count. Good planning there. Timeout. Haifa down by one. We'll be right back. John Bellucci out there. Your favorite song, Simi. I know you love it when they play that one. I love it. Got Bellucci out there doing it with Dan Aykroyd. 
57 seconds to go in the half. Haifa threatening to get its first lead of the game, and you can feel the momentum shifting. And what happened was Roby took took the over the offense on a on a on a uh, uh, a five players that don't usually play together on the court, like you said before, Aaron, with with the two major players, major scorers on the bench, uh, with uh, Jason Rich and, uh, and Davon Jefferson. Jefferson, and they're playing hard, hard defense, and they're making their defense turning it over into points. And Avi's going to stick with the hot team out there, yep. leaving Jefferson and Rich on the bench. And they're pushing up, and they're going hard. Fletcher on Roby. NJ pokes it free, and he gets it back to Haifa. Roby now has it. Off to Pelo Rosa, and they have to regroup. No, gave it away there. Tucker, oh. all alone. Does he have the legs? He does for that one. Uh. Pelo Rosa saying that he fouled him, but they didn't see it, so they had a breakaway there. And He's not the guy you're looking for to handle the ball on a break. He's the finisher. You see, I mean, he's standing there thinking what to do out there, and he should be finishing it. It should have been Benda or, uh, or Benda. Benda or Benda, yeah. indeed. The point guard out there, he's the guy who gets paid to handle the, the ball. We've got ourselves a three-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. And what's the call on that? They're just angry at the, the coach of uh, Benea Sharon for stepping out of his uh, box there. But uh, what's the call on that? It's a new 24? Uh, yeah, that's what he's saying. It's a new 24 second. So Haifa should be holding for a final shot in that case. Yeah. And Don Shamir stepped on the floor. He shouldn't have been there. He's lucky he didn't get teed up. Yeah. Benda. To the hole. Down to oh, NJ. Nice. Regroups nice and gets it. Four, three, two, one. There it is. Over. Heaves it up there. Tucker at the buzzer. No yeah. good. And that's your halftime score. 36 35. Nash runs still leading, but Haifa getting oh so close. Yeah, you know, they played. They fought their way back into the game, literally. And that's what you like to see when things aren't going well with your starting five. The bench coming off and giving you points from the defense, Aaron. They played tough defense. They turned, made them turn the ball over, turned it into good points. Let's take a look at our top scorers for the first half. You see pacing Haifa. Richard Roby with 12. Nobody else in double figures. Jefferson only played 11 minutes. That's very little for him. But he did score six points. P.J. Tucker... On the other hand, 12 points for him in his debut. Clancy was seven, and you see Sean James was in trouble with fouls all half long. Let's take a look at our overall statistics for the first half, and you see them over there. The shooting difficulty is from beyond the arc for the free throw line as well. You see the free throw line, 13 for Haifa against five, and only making six out of 13. That's less than 50%. That's horrible. Well, both teams look equally horrible in those departments and pretty much in all the others as well, and that's why <laughs> we have ourselves a one-point game here, Semi. Yeah, and the difference is the rebounding. 15 for, uh, for Haifa against 23 for the Romana Sharon. Assists basically even turnovers. Uh, Benea Sharon even has more. So we're going to send you out to our halftime presentation now. The week in review in basketball and soccer will be right back after this for the second half. Do you know where I play ball? It may surprise me. I'll play in Israel. Israeli basketball, Maccabi Haifa, the amazing moves, the wild action, the exciting spirit. Streaming live games available on TriangleInternet.tv. Follow your favorite team and get the latest gear. Jerseys, signed basketballs, headwear, accessories, gifts. Available now at TriangleInternet.tv. Haifa Hoops for Kids, a joint initiative of Maccabi Haifa Basketball and United Jewish Communities of Metro West, offers the North American community the chance to send underprivileged and special needs children to a night of fun at a Maccabi Haifa game. Haifa Hoops for Kids is a great way to give back to the Israeli community. Help bring a smile to the face of a child who would otherwise not be able to afford a professional basketball game. Make a difference in a child's life. Become a donor. Reach out and help a child in Israel.
Shalom and welcome to the highlights of the 15th round of the Israeli Premiership Basketball League. I'm Gil Barak. Let's go! Cholon in yellow hosted Maccabi Haifa. Cholon's guy in the first half was Yoni Nir who had 18 points in the first 20 minutes. Haifa scored only 19 points in the second half but still had a chance to send this one into overtime. Down by 3, 4 seconds to the end, Moshe Mizrahi missed the 3 pointer. After winning in Malcha in the last round, Cholon gets his second victory in a row, this time 73-72 over Maccabi Haifa. Maccabi Tel Aviv paid a visit to Ramat Gan to play against the local team. The game started with Ramat Gan on top and the team led by 2 after 10 minutes. Then Stefan Lazme heated up and with few dunks gave Maccabi the lead. In the last quarter the game clock had some problems and stole everyone by 20 minutes. In the meantime, Gershon found some time to kill time. At the end, the yellow jerseys won easily 101 to 79. Paul Jerusalem in red paid a visit to Benea Sharon's home court. The first half was tight. Sean James did a great job, as usual, under the basket and held Jerusalem from pulling away early on. The second quarter was horrible on both teams' part. The percentage from the field was bad and after 20 minutes the score was 35-31 to 31 in favor of Jerusalem. Jumping right to the last quarter, a minute and a half to the end, Naimi put Jerusalem on top by four. Nea Sharon didn't give up, plans to equalize the score from the line at 72. Then it was Dijon Thompson's turn, but he missed twice. Now pay attention to this play. In spite of Lyons' foul on Clancy, the ball was still in the Reds' hands. Naimi went to the basket and drew the foul. The first ball went in, the second didn't, but Lyons was there to seal the deal. Jerusalem works hard and wins at the end, 76-72. to 72. Barak Natania in yellow hosted Ironi Ashkelon. Tight first half ended up with Natania on top, 42 to 40. The beginning of the third quarter set the tone for the rest of the game. Natania came out strong from the locker room and finished the fourth quarter the same way. At the end, 86 to 78 in favor of the home team. Yiboa Galil hosted Maccabi Rishon Lezion in a game where the two teams looked to put an end to a three-game losing streak. The first quarter was owned by the hosts. Rishon Lezion's Larry O'Bannon scored 28 points and his team was back in business. 40-37 in favor of the home team at the break. The second half was tied until Brian Randall made sure that the W would stay in the Galil. 87-83 at the end. The team from Naharia hosted a full in the red jerseys. Yaakov Gino's team played its best game of the season. And here are the stats. Naharia made 15 out of 16 shots in the first half. Lamar Greer was deadly beyond the arc. He had 7 out of 8 and ended up with 27 points. Naharia humiliated the Fula 105 to 71 at the end. These were the highlights of the 15th round of the Israeli Premiership Basketball League. Thanks for watching. 
check us out next week. Do you know where I play ball? It may surprise me. I'll play in Israel. Israeli basketball, Maccabi Haifa, the amazing moves, the wild action, the exciting spirit. Streaming live games available on triangleinternet.tv. Follow your favorite team and get the latest gear. Jersey, signed basketballs, headwear, accessories, gifts. Available now at triangleinternet.tv. Haifa Hoops for Kids, a joint initiative of Maccabi Haifa basketball and United Jewish Communities of Metro West offers a North American community the chance to send underprivileged and special needs children to a night of fun at a Maccabi Haifa game. Haifa Hoops for Kids is a great way to give back to the Israeli community. Help bring a smile to the face of a child who would otherwise not be able to afford a professional basketball game. Make a difference in a child's life. Become a donor. Reach out and help a child in Israel. Shalom and welcome to the highlights of the 24th round of the Israeli Premiership Soccer League. I'm Gil Barak, here we go. Maccabi Haifa hosted Sports Club Ashdod. In the 17th minute, Elisha Levy sent to the field Muhammad Gadir as a substitute. Haifa started to put some pressure on the visitors and two minutes to the end, Rafaelo found Gadir, who sneaked into the penalty area and gave Haifa the lead and consequently the victory 1-0. Ashdod's defense left Gadir all alone and paid the price. That was Gadir's third goal of the season. In the 34th minute of the game between Apoel Tel Aviv and Bnei Sakhnin, Boyle Zomri Canada got the ball in the right wing and passed the ball towards the goal as Sakhnin's defense just stood and stared. The Havi reached the ball in a great timing and put his team on top 1-0. To Boyle kept its advantage until the final whistle and the score remained the same. 1-0 to zero, Tel Aviv at the end. Maccabi Tel Aviv's goalkeeper, Liran Schrauber, didn't have the best of games against Maccabi Petach Tikva. In the 48th minute, Avi Echiel's header find the net behind Schrauber. 1-0 Petach Tikva. In the 75th minute, Maccabi's defense simply didn't function and Dovev Gabay punished with this great strike. Yossi Shifron managed to close the gap by one goal three minutes to the end, but that was it. At the end, Maccabi lost 2-1, its second consecutive loss. Beitar Jerusalem's new head coach, David Amsalem, had his debut at Teddy Stadium against Maccabi Netanya. It took only two minutes for Jerusalem's Barak Itzhaki to score the first. Twenty-eight minutes later, Tammuz found Itzhaki again and the score was doubled. Itzhaki didn't cool off even after the break and in the 69th minute he scored the third. Almo Cohen cut down Beitar's lead to two goals, but it ended up with Jerusalem on top 3-1. The 
These were the highlights of the 24th round of the Israeli Premiership Soccer League. Thanks for watching. I'm Gil Barak. Check us out next week. So long. Do you know where I play ball? It may surprise me. I'll play in Israel. Israeli basketball. Maccabi Haifa. The amazing moves. The wild action. The exciting spirit. Streaming live games available on triangleinternet.tv. Follow your favorite team and get the latest gear. Jerseys, signed basketballs, headwear, accessories, gifts. Available now at triangleinternet.tv. Haifa Hoops for Kids, a joint initiative of Maccabi Haifa Basketball and United Jewish Communities of Metro West, offers the North American community the chance to send underprivileged and special needs children to a night of fun at a Maccabi Haifa game. Haifa Hoops for Kids is a great way to give back to the Israeli community. Help bring a smile to the face of a child who would otherwise not be able to afford a professional basketball game. Make a difference in a child's life. Become a donor. Reach out and help a child in Israel. We welcome you back, and uh, we're ready to get underway in the second half. 36-35 for Bnei HaSharon, low-scoring affair. And so far, Simi, it has been a matchup between Richard Roby and P.J. Tucker. Those two guys have been going at it tonight, and you take a look at the numbers over there. P.J. Tucker, not bashful, Simi. His first game here in almost two years, and he was 13 shots in the first half. Yeah, well, yeah, but, you know, a lot of them were offensive rebounds that he took off the boards. He's playing within the framework of the game. Uh, they're working off his man that uh, making Davon uh, come out or whoever's guarding him, and he's taking advantage of his quickness. Uh, Richard Roby is playing a, a, an excellent game. He's gotten to his rhythm. Uh, he has his confidence. They're playing to him. And uh, plus they're, make, like I said before, uh, Haifa is making points off their defense, and that's what brought him back, only being down one. Now, we talked before the game about Davon Jefferson, you see in your screen there. Never mind the points. He had six points. He only had 11 minutes, Sammy. We're not used to seeing that from him. Um, what's going on? Why is he not getting the regular minutes? Well, We're well he, ran, he ran in, He got two fouls. He ran into foul trouble. Things weren't working out. Uh, Avi Ashkenazi made a change, Aaron, and the change worked. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. And that's what happened. So he finished this half with, with two fouls. Him and... Uh, 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 he had two fouls Mamadou and Kujikaro as well, and, two fouls. Him and uh, Kujikaro have two fouls. Yeah. So now they can play at ease and not worry about the third foul. And he didn't have a single rebound in that first half. And part of the trouble for Haifa was that they got really beaten off the boards, which usually is their strength against a, a big, strong here at Salia, uh, rather, uh, Benia Sharon team. You know, now I see uh, Richard Roby and, and uh, um, Kuki Belcher guarding each other. You know, one went to Nebraska, the other went, and there's... Uh, Not wasting much time there. That's Jason Rich. Jason Rich, State. and Haifa has their first lead of the night with that play. The inbounds play there. Jason Rich nailing the jump shot. And Haifa up by one. First time this evening we can say that. P.J. Tucker. Recovers. It's a walk. Isaac Rosenfeld. Interesting lineup over there. He's out there with Ares Cuts with Clancy. Belcher. And Tucker. Sean James with the three fouls still sitting on the bench. Hajaj. Kujikaro. Nowhere to go. Struggling, but gets around there and gets it in. That's what's called Aaron determination. <laughs> Definitely determination there on Kujikaro. Spun himself out of position, spun himself right back into it. Take a look at the yeah, replay. Yeah, you know, he got bumped a couple of times. He looked like a pinball machine for a minute. <laughs> Ido Kujikaro, the pinball has, wizard. He has that body that can take those bumps. And uh, we have a kid uh, sweeping the floor clean of sweat as the uh, fans in green cheering louder than we've heard them all night. They have their first lead of the evening here early on in the second half. Fletcher finds Isaac Rosenfeld. No good, the rebound Kujikara. And here comes Haifa again, Jason Rich. 
And Roby begging for it, finally yes. gets it, and, and the good. foul. And he was under there begging, like you said, he almost got down on his knees. But he said, give it to me, and he gave it up. And here, Jason Ritz sees Richard Roby. Florida State to Colorado, two points and a foul shot. And a five-point lead for Haifa, their largest lead. And it's a six-nothing run. And Richard Roby going on the line. You see the numbers in him tonight. He has definitely been Haifa's most outstanding player this evening. And you're seeing uh, uh, the Haifa team push up on uh, Benel Sharon, trying to extend the floor for him. And uh, that's what the story is. Here we got Kuchikaro on Tucker, which isn't really a good uh, matchup. Rosenfeld throws it away. And Clancy asked for the ball inside, didn't really get it where he was asking for it, and now it's hockey co goes in from Rosenfeld. And he's mad. Had a couple of difficult minutes out there, and uh, a 7-0 run to start the second half for Haifa. His assistant coach is talking to him. Ori eats hockey into the game, number 10. And you see the run there stretching back to last half. 22 to 6 runs, Sammy, for Haifa. They have turned this game around in a hurry. And there it is. And they keep doing so. And that's a big shot by Draw Judge, who hasn't been playing well lately, who was sick, who made a big jump shot just now. And you like to see that. Nine point lead for Haifa. Clancy. First point to the second half for Benesharon. After two minutes and 10 seconds. And how'd you like that? A 25 to 6 run there for Haifa in almost 10 minutes. Benea Sharon, who controlled the pace early on, just disappeared. Oh, man. And oh. Rich goes to the hole again. Ori Itzhaki goes to the steal, and Jason just burns it. Sam Clancy. Like a train, he's rolling. Bletcher in the corner. Rims it out. Rich the rebound. Down nice. to Roby again. Oh, nice look, though. Rebound we, Jefferson. We got a first one. A first rebound for Jefferson. He wants it. And, and he takes it. it. And he got bumped three times. And we love and to see it. And that's determination for there you too. There go. And I'm into it. 11-point lead. Haifa dominating the second half. 14-2. to two. And look at Jefferson swipe it's it away. It's come now. Here it comes. Two on one. Here it comes. Then crossover. Oh, the finish, no that's good. That's a foul. Tucker well, flips it out to Belcher. He's looking at Davon's looking at the ref. Where the hell were you? Bletcher going to the hole. Gets hit by Jefferson. No call there either. Tucker. Oh. And the ball off of Jefferson. <laughs> and he's upset. He's upset with himself. And it seems like the refs have pocketed their whistles so far and, in the second half. And that's a nice timeout, a nice timeout by the coach of uh, Benea Sharon, Dan Shamir. We'll be right back. Haifa up by 11. Haifa coming out of that timeout, and they can be happy with the first three and a half minutes of this quarter. You know, I'm 14 gonna, to 2, Sammy. I'm going to tell you something that I really took for me to believe. Haifa has committed five fouls in 20, almost 20, 23 and a half minutes. Yeah, it's amazing. And they're playing physical. It's not like they're not playing physical. 
Benash Aron has been called for uh, almost 15 there, and Tucker with the bucket. And speak of the devil, Simi, every time you do it, they <laughs> the refs hear you. Yeah, but it's an out of bounds play, and they should yeah. be playing the zone. So a foul can... there called. And that's foul number two on Rich. So yeah. uh, Jefferson, Rich, Kujikaro each have a pair. Nobody else has anything. Tucker with 15. And all of a sudden, it's an eight-point game. So how do you like that? Roby and Tucker each have 15, nobody else in double figures. Roby, oh. tough shot. Oh, he just floated that up there. He should have stopped and took a jump shot. Nice move there, Aris Katz. Yeah, but you're giving up layups. You shouldn't be giving up layups. You're giving up your, the lead that you worked so hard to get. And that lead now down to six. Hajaj, fadeaway nice. shot, gets it. Nice. Go Hajaj, got a little bit of his confidence left. I'm in back. Five points in this quarter. And he's three for three in the game for seven points overall. Tucker. Clancy. Clash of the Titans down there with Clancy and Kujikaro. Nice turnaround shot. Yeah, but that's Rolls a out. bad angle. That's and Ori Itzhaki got airborne and gets called for the foul. And that, yeah, that was almost, that was almost a foul, uh, an intentional foul. And that's almost, number three on Ori Itzhaki. Almost ripped his head off. Take a look there at Dror Hajaj. The nice crossover, floater. Nice and jump. Gets the bucket. And here we got Roby coming out and Jesse in the game. And you want to get it up into double figures. We got eight point lead now. Run your offenses. Hajaj with the move. Nice, nice look to Kujikaro. Oh, no. One inch. Misses one it inch. again. Two one inches. Hajaj again. Ma, oh, also misses one it. One inches. And Simi is throwing a fit here. <laughs> Tucker coming back. Haifa gift wrapping this one right now. It's insane. It's hockey. To Katz for three. No good. Sean James out of position down there. He's been a non-factor tonight because of foul trouble. Jefferson. Makes his move. The rebound, Pelo Rosa. Everybody hitting the deck there, and, and Haifa Jefferson, ends up with it. Jefferson makes a great play. Great hustle by Davon Jefferson. Missed the shot. Ball was on the floor. Got down and got dirty. Rich, fadeaway J. He's leaning back. And oh, look at wow. Jefferson tip it in, going upstairs. And that's a Davon we know right over Cookie Bletcher, who couldn't keep him off the boards. And now it's an eight-point game again. And Jefferson, no, ten, ten points. points. Ten point game, I'm sorry. And the ten-point lead is how much Davon Jefferson has after two weeks in a row in which he did not secure double figures. He's back where he belongs. Davon just jumped for that and won a little extra to tip it in. Ron Steele in the game now. Nice player, University of Alabama. Averages 10 points a game for this club. Cookie, nowhere to go, and he got bailed out. Oh my God, what are they calling the foul for? That's his third foul on Davon, didn't touch him. And Ron Steele is gonna well, maybe no, he no. won't go to the line. No line. They called it on the ground. So Jefferson's going to stay in the game with three fouls. Yeah, well, you know, part of the game. Four minutes to go in third. Ron Steele. Rosenfeld. Down to Sean James. They need him to get in this game. Tough shot. Good defense by Kujikaro. Jefferson rips down the rebound Too and leads the people. attack. Too many people. Bring it out. Hot oh, nice play. Rich. Nice play. Foul. Yes. Bucket. 
and it counts. Nice pass to Jason Rich on the bottom. Nice play. And the fans, the that's, Green Apes getting into it now. And that's, uh, what's his name's fourth foul? Indeed. Um, uh, Sean James. Sean James foul. having a nightmare evening. He's not this, having an evening. This guy is, uh, in the ratings, considered to have the most effective player in the league as far as his rebounds, points, blocks. But tonight, a non-factor in this big matchup for his team. Uh, he got blown for two quick fouls in the first quarter. And he took him right out of the game. I mean, he wasn't effective after that. And, you know, one of those fouls was, wasn't really a foul. You know, just... And the lead now, 13. Double substitution for Haifa. Mamadou NJ is going to come in along with Ben David. Kujikaro sits. And so does Jason Rich. Mamadou NJ has four tonight. And you know, you've got some nice things here. Rosenfeld just throws it away. Pella Rosa, Haifa running. Throws it away as well, yeah, and they come the other way. Again, he's not Rosenfeld. Supposed, he's not supposed to make the decision. Steal and the foul on Hajaj. And that's a good foul. They took it on the side. Hajaj negotiating here with his assistant coach. Can you read between the lines there, Simi? I can't even see the lines. It's hockey wide open for three. Yeah, but that was an offensive foul. Rosenfeld battling there with Hajaj. And it's going to be Haifa. Everybody's going down the court without the referees making the call, which is amazing. And now Davon's coming out. Kujikaro's coming in. Davon has three fouls. So you see uh, Ido out there now with Mamadou NJ. And, you know, Ido's a big man, but next to Mamadou, he looks like his kid. We got a zone out there by the, uh, by the Benin Sharon team. Nice fake there, Pelo Rosa nice with the finish. Move. Nice move, and Pelo Rosa. A little shake and bake for him. And Pelo Rosa's a sneaker came untied, and the referees won't give him a... Yeah, you got to be careful out there with that. Rosenfeld's still in there. Nowhere to go, and Ben David goes in there just to grab the ball. And it's a jump ball, and the ball and the arrow is the favor of, of uh, Benea Sharon. And it's a 15-point game, Aaron. How do you like that? Two and a half to go in the third, and this has, quarter has been all Maccabi Haifa. 23 points for them, only seven for Benin Sharon, who's gone ice cold here in the second half. No, well, they're not running their plays. I don't know. You know, they, the, the, uh, the, the offense is just on working, and Haifa's defense is really tough. Tucker, no good. Got an open look, could not connect. Benea Sharon only 38% from the field tonight. Yeah, they're, they're, they're itchy. They're not waiting. They're not taking their time. You know, I mean, you, you can run an offense, run it for 15 seconds. You now here we got Jason into zone, the zone defense. Nowhere to go. Good defense by Tucker. Oh the God. fake by Kujikaro. Oh, wow. He got hammered by Rosenfeld, but did it happen before the 24 I don't know. shot he got clock? Hammered. He got hammered. Expired? Hammered. And you see Jeff Rosen likes what he sees. He did. Apparently right before the buzzer, he got hammered. And Kujikar is going to go to the line. Yeah. Dan yeah. Shamir doesn't like it. And I'm really surprised at, at Sean James how he jumped on a jump shot by Kujikaro. Let him shoot it. You know, don't let him go to the bucket. That's Sean James was not called that because he already has four, so he's still in the game. Yeah, but, I, I, you know, that's bad, either bad scouting or something. I don't know. He should know Kujikaro by now. And Kujikaro oh. having typical Kujikaro numbers yeah. so far. Seven points, six rebounds. And it's a 16-point lead. And what a turnaround we have seen here. Rice for three. Yeah, no good, way off the mark. That's insane. 
these guys are shooting anything in the, except for my ex-wife, and that's who they should have shot. That was a joke. I'm not even touching that. That was a joke. And that's Tucker. a bad pass by Bender. And Pelo Rosa gets called for the reach. And that's a bad pass by Bender. Take your time, Bender. Make the proper pass. Don't jump in the air. We learned that in Biddy Ball. He was from Ranana. You might have seen behind your screen over there, dressed in street clothes, Jeremy Tyler sitting on the bench. Uh, second game in a row where he is not dressing. And uh, really, none of the plans of uh, Coach Avishkenazi anymore, especially since the signing of Mama Duende. They've got an extra foreigner, so he's not in there. And, um, and that's a two-shot foul against... Really, like you said, he's not in their plans anymore. And uh, by the game, uh, three games ago, when he left at halftime, he was uh, fined 20,000 shekels by the team. That's, That's roughly 6, about... 6,000 bucks. Yeah, around 6,000 bucks. Um, so uh, just a very disappointing season for that young man. Uh, you got to change your attitude. you got to be a man. you got to go out there and do the things you have to do. You know, I'm really surprised that Sonny Volcaro, who helped him get this job, you know, just really surprised. Ben Rice connects on those two. He's got four points tonight. That's more than his season average. But for Banana Sharon, they've got nothing except for Sam, uh, excuse me, for P.J. Tucker. And they've gone back to the man-to-man. -man. And Pelo Rosa going in there like a running back, uh, like the football player he used to be. Lots of contact, but Tucker goes in. Lots of contact there, too, and also no call. Pelo Rosa throws it out to Benda and Avishkenazi pleading with him. Slow it down. 50 seconds left of the quarter. And 10 on the shot clock. Rich, lots of contact. Nothing called. Kujikara waiting there oh about an hour. God. Can't connect. Mamadou oh. NJ gets in the mix. Pelo Rosa ends up yes. with it and he puts the bucket. And the foul. And that's hitting the boards. And I'm really surprised. Because you've got some, you know, you've got Sean James in there. He's got four fouls. Yeah, but so he can jump for a rebound. You know, you got Tucker there. You don't have Clancy, which I'm surprised, but, you know. And it's a back to 15 points, 16 points. And the route is on now in a most unlikely form. And here comes Clancy. Haifa way down in the first. They were down in double figures. March all the way back. Get within a point at halftime. And they have just owned this third quarter. You know what the difference between this half and the other half is? They're playing Haifa basketball on offense. In the second quarter, they played Haifa basketball on defense and got back into the game. And now they're putting them both together. Ron Steele leading the attack there. 17-point game. It's a difference of eight seconds between the end of the quarter and the 24 second clock and here we've got a bump out here steel nj on him he pulls up rims it out and rich has it with five seconds to go he's going to hold on to it tries to thread uh, the needle to kujikaro but cannot connect and so 2.3 seconds to go jason rich you know leonard would knock you on your buttocks or Stan Jones, know your finishers. You should have, you know, I mean, it's, you know, Kujikara running down there. Got 2.3 seconds on the, to the end of the quarter. Steele. Sean James heaves it from half court. It's not gonna count, and the third quarter comes to an end. Haifa blowing away. Benea Sharon, they are up by 17 going into the last quarter. We'll be right back. Do you know where I play ball? It may surprise me. I play in Israel. Israeli basketball, Maccabi Haifa, the amazing moves, the wild action, the exciting spirit. Streaming live games available on triangleinternet.tv. Follow your favorite team and get the latest gear. Jersey, signed basketballs, headwear, accessories, gifts. Available now at triangleinternet.tv. Haifa Hoops for Kids, a joint initiative of Maccabi Haifa Basketball and United Jewish Communities of Metro West, offers a North American community the chance to send underprivileged and special needs children 
to a night of fun at a Maccabi Haifa game. Haifa Hoops for Kids is a great way to give back to the Israeli community. Help bring a smile to the face of a child who would otherwise not be able to afford a professional basketball game. Make a difference in a child's life. Become a donor. Reach out and help a child in Israel. Haifa so hot right now, they've even pulled out the dancing hamburger, Sammy. Let me tell you something. The hamburger is a dancer. And this is our matchup from before the game. Jason Rich, Cookie Bletcher. Jason Rich winning that one. 12 points to five. Uh, you know, basically the rest is pretty even, you know. But, I mean, uh, Jason Rich has come on in the second half. And play, defensively, he's playing excellent basketball, which is very important. And, you know. For those of you back home who didn't know what Simi and I were referring to, they have someone here in Haifa who dresses up as a hamburger and goes and runs around the court, and the fans love her. Um, and she's been coined by us the dancing hamburger. That's right. So just so you don't think we haven't uh, lost our marbles we, we here. Have, we also, Aaron, we have lost our minds, but this is legitimate. We're legit on this one. <laughs> dancing hamburger. Okay. Seen it all. A musical hamburger. Uh, meet with the beat. And we're underway. Last 10 minutes. Haifa in solid control of this game after a devastating third quarter oh. for Panea Sharon. They only scored nine points that quarter. Jesse had a layup, and he dropped the ball. What is going on? Clancy. You can't let people back in the game. Oh. Katz gets the rebound. No, it's Taki. Goes up high to Sean James, but uh, Jefferson interrupts it. Interrupts it? <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. Roby's been quiet after his breakout performance earlier on. Still leading the team. He's got 15. Nine seconds on the clock. Oh, my and God. just throws there it away. There hasn't been a shot to the basket yet. This is insane. A minute's gone by. Sean James. Goes in and nice. gets it. He only his second bucket of the night, an extremely quiet evening for him. Run your offenses, play your game. Don't go to sleep. Roby with the move. Oh. Deflected there by Sean James. That's what he does best. That's Davon's fourth foul. It's on number 21, actually, oh, Richard sorry, Roby. And this is crazy. I mean, they're taking bad shots. Has nothing to do with anything. Run your offenses. James. It's hockey. Out to James, going to take another three-point shot, and he connects. And he makes it. And very impressive there. Sean James, known usually for his, his interior play. And all of a sudden, it's a 12-point game. And he's two for two from beyond the arc tonight. Nice Roby. play. Nice play. Using the rim as a defensive factor in the thing, and, and James couldn't get it. And he sweeps underneath, and you need all the advantage you can against a shot blocker of Sean James' caliber. Clancy. And Kujikaro can't believe it. Esteron is a referee that he has a vivid imagination. He's usually very good at it, but he has a short fuse, and he just better shut up. And didn't look like there was a lot of contact there, but it gets called. It's hockey for three, in and out. Bender with the rebound. And that's more luck than brains. Kid's got a wide open look and nobody saw him. Bender tapping his head. That means something for the Haifa team. Offensive foul against Ido against Kujikaro. He has to understand that. He has to understand that he's part of the team. He can't be doing the stuff that he's doing, demanding the ball. Foul Anybody number four on Ido. If anybody should demand the ball, it should be uh, Davon or Roby. Sean James again, in and out. Sean James. And Smart nice play, play there. Smart play. Smart play by Bender. Bender. Yeah, and here we got NJ coming in 
and Mizrahi coming out, and we got Jesse coming out, and uh, coming out. Caro coming out. To cool off after two quick fouls for Ido. Uh, how can he be mad? I mean, he's playing like. We're seeing something interesting though tonight, Sammy, from Sean James, the guy who was a force inside. It's not working for him. He steps outside and showing us that he's got a hand beyond the arc. He shoots it, but he's been shooting it before. He's he's not completely uh, incapable. Jefferson tries to get it in there to NJ. Deflected. It's cocky all the way, fouled by Moshe. And he wants it to be an intentional foul. Yeah. He might have a point. Yeah, sure. Here we go, he comes down, here we go. And yeah, Moshe it, well, wasn't looking for the ball there. Yeah. He was going body all the way. But it's hockey the line, they've still got a long way to go. You know, people don't realize a 13 point lead, seven minutes to go in the game. Plenty of time, gotta play your game. And a chance to blow them out. And it rolls in and the lead now down to 12. Yep. Also, somebody to keep in mind, Haifa has committed four fouls this quarter, but they are on none as we head into the stretch drive. That means they're going to be shooting two shots every time they get fouled. Oh, what a pass. Jefferson trying to go to work on James. Out to Mizrahi, pulls up in the corner, rejected by James. And they get the ball back. Benea Sharon showing signs of life. Or eats hockey, thinks about it, throws it away. Roby, four on two. Oh, my God. Oh, he carried my it. My God, throw a simple pass. Haifa had four on two. Both teams have, commi have committed 15 turnovers. Timeout, Haifa up by 12. So Haifa scores 27 points in the third period, only two in the first three and a half of the fourth. And you and see the numbers on Richard Roby tonight, having himself a game. 17 points, he averages under eight for the season. Yeah, he's been turning the ball over too much. He should be laying the ball and not making the decisions. And Avi Ashkenazi in that timeout telling his guys, let's play it simple. Let's play it. it's a simple game. Basic basketball. And uh, Jason Rich is back in. Steele. Cass. Walk. Looking for Clancy. Gets by NJ. F foul and the bucket. And now it's going to be a less. 10 point game. It could be less. Game, yeah. Sam Clancy getting in there. Physical against NJ. Got the inside position. NJ in the air, and that was it. How games quickly, games turn around. Sam Clancy now in double figures. He is a workhorse, that guy. And he brings it every game. Every game he brings it. Lane violation against Moshe Mizrahi, so he's gonna get another chance at that. Those are just gimmies. That's insane. And Clancy makes him pay for that mistake. Nine point lead for Haifa, six minutes to go. And we see the pressure being brought up. 
And they're doing something very simple. Ron Steele with the foul. Number eight, that's the first foul on them this quarter in four minutes. They're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make other people than the point guards or Jason Rich make the decision on the play. And that's smart basketball. And Haifa already in the penalty. Panay Sharon, only one foul in this quarter. And you see the slump there for Haifa. They haven't scored in three minutes and 20 seconds. Will that end now? Oh, nice play by With Moshe. the floater. Yeah, and, and Davon made that because they were afraid of Davon, and he just flipped it to Moshe Mizrahi, who threw up a floater. And that's important. Now they got to get a stop. 11-point lead. They go to Sean James between the big men. He can't get a hold of it. Yeah, and uh, draw a judge. Oh, Real and technical Sean foul James on somebody. Sean James teed up. Sean James waved yeah, at the ref. he's gone then. That's and his that's fifth it. That's his fifth foul. He that's is out of here. That's his fifth foul. And that's I don't know. Quit, like you said, he's got a quick trigger, this guy. I mean, yeah, I've seen the, guys do a lot worse than that and Omer, not be teed. Omer Restaurant. He did, Sean James didn't say anything. He just waved me, his hand know, in disgust. Nothing, nothing. But, you know, he just teed him up. And that's his fifth foul. And that'll be it for Sean James. Yeah. One of his weakest performances of the season. This is a guy who uh, averages 14 and a half points a game, nine rebounds a game. And he had a difficult one tonight. Ends with eight points and five rebounds. And uh, mostly thanks to those two three-pointers he made. And Jor Hajaj missed the first one. And Jor Hajaj, one of the better free throw shooters on Maccabi Haifa, Money. 82%. And now you got the ball on the side also. So it's a present of one, uh, one point plus. Sean James is out of the game, which means the shot blocker is gone. And that's worth even more than yeah. two points. Oh, yeah. He was, he was not a factor tonight, which is a big plus for the Haifa team. 12 points up, 67, 55, five and a half to go in the game. Haifa with a comfortable lead. Foul on air is Katz. Katz is just hitting people now. They figure they're going to make the calls. Might as well hit somebody. And that's Ayers' second foul. I don't understand. It's turning into a 12-point a lead. It's turning into a tug of war. Rich with the move. Get some nice. open room and drills nice. it. I love him. I love him. I love I'm going to call Leonard tonight, Hamilton and Stan Jones, and I'm going to just bother them. They're getting ready for the ACC playoffs. Clancy. It's not pretty, but he gets oh, to the rim wow. and gets the bucket. And knocks it down. That's not how Dan Shamir designed it, but he'll take it any way he can. Look at Clancy there just... Bouncing around, gets hit, flips it up, and gets the friendly roll. Number 12 is uh, Mamadou NJ. NJ. Yeah. So it's back to a 12-point lead, five minutes to go in the game. Comfortable lead, but Nash Run not throwing in the towel. They're and, just keeping him fighting and, and staying Benet close. And Sharon is going to press. You see them right up there right now. He's going to press. And Clancy coming on strong. He's got 15 now. And they're going to double on Jason Rich. They've got eight seconds to get it over half court. And they do. Just in time. But that's taking time off the clock. Hadjaj trying to get the pick from NJ. Finally does. Hadjaj pulls the trigger. Hits the back iron. Here comes Benia Sharona. Ron Steele streaking, going baseline. Way out to the top, had his open look. He gives it to Clancy. He's the hot That's hand, a walk. but he walked. That's a walk. Why That's didn't Ron Steele take the shot when he had it? Uh, ask him, Ron. Why didn't you take the shot with? No, well, I don't know. You know, he wanted to make a play, and I don't know. Some guys just want won't take the take the weight at the money time. And here, Cookie Belcher's back in the game for Ron Steele. And you see some pictures of random people in the crowd. I don't know them. Do you know them? That's Mr. and Mrs. Random. Mr. and Mrs. Random. <laughs> Rich, physical move. He's playing great basketball. NJ with the NJ. rebound. He gets fouled. Jason Rich is doing the right things. He's 
He's slicing between the two players. He's talking to the refs about getting bumped and hit. And, you know, I mean, he's, he's banking the ball off the backboard. Uh, the big man came out on him because he's so, so athletic. So and when he missed it, NJ got the rebound. Not only is he a great penetrator, but, uh, you know, uh, a smart penetrator. He just feels the guys leaning in one direction and goes into them. Yeah. I you love him. Jeff Rosen very happy yeah, so far? Yeah, he should be. Second half, great second half. It's back to, nope. Still so NJ 12. can't connect. 12. Four minutes to go. Both teams will be shooting from here on in. NJ out, slaps it, almost gets it, but it's back, he recovers. Pats down to Tucker, reverses, gets what? fouled, it's gonna go to the line. And the foul called on Mamadou NJ. Mamadou uh, uh, Kujikara coming in from Mamadou. Gave him Gave, some nice minutes. Yeah, yeah. Does the little things that don't show up in the uh, stats. Well, speaking of Jeff Rosen, the owner before the game, and uh, he's pleased with Mamadou, says he's a very, very pleasant man. Really uh, embraced the team, and uh, they like him a lot in the locker room. Don't. And it's a 10-point game. Pelo Rosa in. Moshe Mizrahi out. Yep. Pelo Rosa in for defensive reasons. Pelo Rosa plays tough on uh, P.J. Tucker. You see the free throw numbers for Haifa tonight, only 55%. But it hasn't hurt them too bad. Benea Sharon, 78%, but haven't been to the line nearly as much. Maccabi Haifa almost 50% from the field, and Benea Sharon, that's where they've been struggling. 39% field goal percentage. Just gone ice cold in the second half. Jefferson, down nice to Kujikaro. How Missed can you one in. blow that one? How can you miss that? It happens. And Simi almost popping out of his chair and yeah. tackling Ido Kujikaro yeah. on that one. It's an important game for the Haifa team. People don't understand. Next week is the Netanya team coming in that's coming off a big win in Jerusalem. You have to understand, it has to stop the draining. You lose the one-point game away to Hulon, which actually wasn't a one-point game. It was a three-point game. We'll be right back after this. Ashkenazi in that timeout telling guys we have three and a half minutes to go. Let's close this game out. Play tough and keep your eyes out for Cookie Bletcher. Don't let him get hot. Yeah, well, Cookie's a shooter. Oh, here, Kushikawa got two shots. 70-60 for Haifa. Dan Shamir perspiring, knowing that his team may be headed for their fourth loss in a row. Well, we've only scored eight points in six, uh, six and a half minutes. And this is after that offensive explosion. Look at the numbers on Kujikawa tonight. Not very impressive from the field. Two for ten. From one inch. But I don't know how he does it. He always ends up with a double-double somehow.
Makes them both. And it's a 12 point game, and there gotta be stops. Maurice Taki, down to Sam Clancy. He wants to work on Kujikaro. Nice fadeaway. Can't get the roll. P.J. Tucker can't get the follow. Somebody got to come and help. And here comes Hajaj. Rich was wide open. He was That's begging all right. for the ball. Run the offense. Take some time off the clock. Not that. Run your offense. You're not running an offense. Shot clock down to six. Jeffers is going to isolate. Tough situation. Has to fire it up. No good. Rebound Clancy. 2.45 to go. He's hockey from the corner. They cannot buy a break. It went over the top. They didn't call it. And Tucker uh, with the putback. It didn't touch the backboard. It's, uh, it's in play. P.J. No Tucker with 19. Ten point lead for Haifa. 2.20 to go. Rich throws up a oh, circus yes. shot. Oh, yes. And the circus is yeah. in town. Yes. The circus is three ring now, Ringling Brothers. And he's having fun. You see the smile there on Jason Rich. And if they go on to win, that'll be the exclamation point. Just, look at that. Yeah, he just threw it up because he got fouled. They didn't call the foul, and it went down. Take Here a we look go. at that again. Splits the defense. Yes. That's going to make Israeli Sports Center highlight reel tonight. The whirling dervish shot. Rebound by Rich. He's taking the game over right now. Hajaj pulls up. See Money. you later. Yep. And that might be it. Under and two to hear, go. You hear my girlfriend, the fat lady, singing. Draw Hajaj in double figures as well. That's four Haifa players there. And Jason Rich putting an exclamation point on this matchup tonight. They kept their eye on Bletcher. Couldn't connect. You know, Haifa lost their season opener here against Maccabi Tel Aviv. Since then, undefeated in Romama Arena. Look at the numbers from three-point land. Tasharon taking a ton and connecting at 20-odd percent. Jefferson in and out. Pelo Rosa comes flying in. He's got the rebound. And that'll do it. A 14-point lead for Haifa. They are going to cruise to victory. And Haifa gave up 20 20-something points in the second half. And oh, Rich oh, with yes, the jam session. Yes, Jason Rich, Florida State. Even Avi Ashkenazi got a smile on that. Give me a smile, Avi. There we go. Avi even oh. giving us a tongue. Yeah, yeah, Sticking out his tongue he, with the windmill jam by he, Jason he's Rich. He's happy because he understood how important this game was. This is an important game. And Jason Rich to steal, and this is just for fun right now. Yes. And all of a sudden, it's turning into a blowout. And it's an 18-point lead. Dror Hajaj with 12, and how do you like that? You got to love Dror for, for being able to do that. To steal Jefferson. Here it comes. And he's going to take off. See you later. Slam dunk, Davon Jefferson. Fans going ballistic. A 20-point lead for Haifa. A 10-0 run for Haifa in the last three minutes of this game. Close it out. And there is no one left sitting on the Haifa bench. No one left sitting in the Haifa stands. And the only one sitting is me because I can't get up. <laughs> you got to love it. You got to love it. Katz fires a desperation three. He makes it. But it will not matter. Haifa cruises to a emphatic victory tonight. A powerful second half, and that'll do it. Your final score, 82-65. Spearheaded by Richard Roby and Jason Rich. You see the breakdown there, and the period that made the difference, no doubt about it. The third, 27-9 for Haifa, turning the game around, and they cruise to victory. Let's take a look at our leading scorers. P.J. Tucker, 19 for Banana Sharon. Sam Clancy, 15, but they didn't get much else from anyone else. Rich leads the way for Haifa. Roby, 17. Jefferson Hajaj with a dozen each. And Ido Kujikaro, even though he went 2 for 10, he still managed to end up 
with nine points. And, you know, and I got to tell you, you know, the key was the big man getting into foul trouble at the beginning of the game for uh, Renee Sharon. Uh, and uh, Sean James had, had a horrible game because he was taken out of the game, and that's happened sometimes. And, he, and, and that was basically the story. And take a look at the numbers there. The three-point shooting killed them, Simi. They went six for 22, 27 percent, and did not have a chance to get back in the game. We're going to be right back with an interview with a Maccabi Haifa player. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in 60 seconds. Do you know where I play ball? It may surprise you. I'll play in Israel. Israeli basketball, Maccabi Haifa, the amazing moves, the wild action, the exciting spirit. Streaming live games available on triangleinternet.tv. Follow your favorite team and get the latest gear. Jerseys, signed basketballs, headwear, accessories, gifts. Available now at triangleinternet.tv. Haifa Hoops for Kids, a joint initiative of Maccabi Haifa basketball and United Jewish Communities of Metro West offers a North American community the chance to send underprivileged and special needs children to a night of fun at a Maccabi Haifa game. Haifa Hoops for Kids is a great way to give back to the Israeli community. Help bring a smile to the face of a child who would otherwise not be able to afford a professional basketball game. Make a difference in a child's life. Become a donor. Reach out and help a child in Israel. Welcome back, Maccabi Haifa winning tonight 82-65 and we are joined now courtside by Richard Roby, 17 points tonight, instrumental points I'll say because you gave the team the push when they needed it, you guys were behind, you made that spurt with an unlikely lineup, tell us how this game was for you guys, how important this victory was. Uh, we need all these home games, we got like a three or four game home stretch I think, you know, we kept coming off a loss, that we, a game we felt we should have won and we knew they needed this game too, so it's gonna be a hard fought game, but you know what I'm saying? Luckily we came out here with a, with a lot of heart and pulled it out. Nothing was going right for you guys in the first quarter. Uh, second quarter comes and you're on your home court and this is a very important game. Second quarter comes on, Dave Vaughn and, uh, and uh, Jason Rich are sitting on the bench and uh, a team that usually doesn't play together is out there and brings the team back in. How did that happen? You and, and Jesse and, and, and the guys that were fighting defensively. You know, we got a, we have a very deep team. You know, a lot of guys that are on our bench can be starters in a lot of places in this uh, in the league. So we just want to go out there and play hard and, you know, compete and bring a spark, and that's what we did. Richard, before you came here, you know, it was Jason Rich and Davon Jefferson. Avish Kanazi seemed to always want to have at least one of them on the court. And lately we've been noticing he's been coming up with a second unit, which you've been the focal guy. How have you stepped up for that challenge? You know, I'm just playing my game, really. Um... I, that's what I, I, I can score the ball, and that's what I do. You know, so I just want to bring a spark and just help. Whatever I can do to help the team win, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm happy to do it. How did it feel to play against the team you played for last year? Oh, it's always fun to play against those guys. You know, me and Sean James became really good friends last year, so it's always fun to uh, play with him and get these bragging rights when I go when we hang oh, out. Okay, now let me ask you something. I met your girlfriend uh, at the game in Hulon. You getting married? Yeah. When? Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're no, just, no, no, I don't know. He wants when to know if he's invited married? to the wedding. When are you getting married? I want to hear this. Come on now. You I know, met Cassidy, your daughter. Come on now. Give it up. It's going to be, it's going to be very soon. You know what I mean? I just, we don't have a date planned right now because we, times are real hectic. You know, before I got here, you know what I'm saying? I was hard trying to search for a job out there. So I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I don't believe you. BS. That's all that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We don't need a certificate to be married. Let, my let me let me tell you something. It's a pleasure to see you come out and play so nicely and, and relaxed. And is this the way it is on the team? Do they give you that confidence on the team, the, the coaching staff? Yeah. You know, these guys got a lot of confidence in me. You know, we play against each other in practice, so they know what I'm capable of doing. And I'm just going out there and just doing what I can do, really. There you go. Well, Richard, you know, you guys are 11-5 and five now after this victory. Next week, we've got another team who's 11-5, Barack Natania. They're sort of like the Maccabi Haifa this year coming up. What do you know about those guys, and what does next week's game mean for you guys? They've been playing really well. You know, they got a lot of weapons over there. Um, it's going to be a fun game, a very important game. You know, we need to move up and push them down. So we want to we get that home court advantage in the playoffs, so we need this one. All right, well, that'll do it for us. We'll be back again to broadcast that game. Until then... Good luck. Uh, great victory tonight for Haifa. 82-65 coming back in the third to dominate. That'll do it for me. On behalf of Simi Regram, Aaron Heller saying good night. We'll see you in a week.